This is Zotax, first time back on our bench since the thorough lashing we gave it about two years ago with one of the 980 Extreme cards. And it's thanks to a reader who has loaned us his card for testing. The Zotac 1080Ti Amp Extreme is a full quarter inch larger than one of the next largest cards out, the Asus Strix. And it's uh, nearly an inch larger than a two slot card. So the Amp Extreme is one of the biggest cards out there that you can get. And you would hope that that is somehow affording a benefit to cooling. So we'll be testing that shortly, but first we're doing a teardown of the card to see how it's constructed, how the transfer is from the FETs, the VRAM, all of that to the actual massive aluminum heatsink, and ultimately looking at the quality of design as a whole and seeing if buying a bigger card is in fact better. And in the past, that's not always the case. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and their 1080 Ti SC2 which we've recommended fairly highly for its build quality and uh, the ICX sensors, which are kind of fun to play with. You can check our full SC2 review for the 1080 Ti if you're curious to learn more, or you can click the link in the description below to find the product page for the 1080 Ti SC2. Zotac has taken the brute force approach to pretty much everything on the Amp Extreme 1080 Ti, especially in the cooling department by using a massive cooler. They've taken a brute force approach to the VRM, by using a 16-phase VRM, though we'll talk about that more later. And uh, they've even got two 8-pins and then a 3-fan setup. So we're going to take it apart and see how everything looks internally and before making any further judgments. And then we'll have the full review separately probably one to two days after this goes up. But let's start with the teardown first. So on the back side of the card, standard layout here, there are four spring tension screws that are the standard ones used in all of the 1080 Ti's for the most part. Some of them are a bit special, but so far not too different. These hold the cold plate and probably the entire large aluminum mass to the PCB. And then we've got an extra screw up here, which is probably just for extra support because again, really heavy card. I mean, I haven't weighed it, but it's the heaviest one that we've had in hand. Uh, I think that's it. It's five screws. And then these are all on the other side. So these, you can see that they are screw points for the opposite side of the card, probably under the PCB or on the PCB side. So let's see if this is loose yet. It is. Okay. What's holding me down? All right, got it. Okay, so we're cleaning the thermal paste off first. There's your copper cold plate. And uh, let's take a look at, let's start with the thermal pads, ignoring the thermal paste that's on there. So we've got the green thermal pads for VRAM contact. And this is the first 1080 Ti for those who have been keeping track that we've taken apart that is missing a different module. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. Every other 1080 Ti we've seen has been missing this VRAM module, which seems uh, more, uh, it, it seemed like a, a constant, but now we've got the bottom left one missing instead. Uh, so that's just kind of interesting, but not actually functionally that different. So uh, for the thermal pads, we've got contact here on those, and then we have contact on the uh, memory VRM. So here's your memory VRM, this block right here, with the indentation being used for the chokes. And let me disconnect the rest of this so that we have more freedom to move it around. These are RGB and power headers. This one's for the back plate, it looks like. Yes, that is for the back plate. This one's gonna be a little more difficult to remove safely. Okay, there we go. So you just pull it out by the white header rather than the cables. Uh, and we've got it separated. Now, let's take a look at the VRM coin. So there's a uh, an aluminum plate here that's finned for VRM cooling. This is on top of the MOSFETs. We'll look at those in a minute, a minute ignoring the thermal paste all over my hands. Uh, so that's covering the MOSFETs, the doublers, which there are definitely doublers in there. And then this is contacting the underlying components by a green thermal pad, which isn't too visible, but maybe you can see that. So there's a green thermal pad in there contacting the core VRM components. Let's flip that around. And then for this one, we have 
uh, a not thermal pad. This looks like a rubber damper and or bumper. If I push on it, yeah, check that out. Can we get this? Uh, can you see that? If I push on it, you'll see the surface kind of deform, but return to where it is. That shows you this is rubber. This is not a thermal pad. And I mean, I can feel it by pushing on it. You can feel what a thermal pad is very clearly. And let's just show on one of these the difference. So if you look at this one over here, we can push down on this in a corner. See how it leaves an indentation? So that's not happening here on this. This is rubber. The reason this would exist, I suppose, is if they are trying to damp the vibration of which there would be none, really. I mean, we've got a massive three fan cooler. If you have vibration at this point, there's a serious flaw in the design. So that's my guess. That's probably the damp vibration between the fin stack and the VRM heat sink for, if they were to rub against one another. Now, the reason this is potentially very dumb, I'm just confirming here. Yeah, even if I pick up the edges, it doesn't move. So it is actually just glued on rubber. And is there a metal plate in there? No. No, it's actually just rubber. There's not like a plate under it. So the reason this doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll see in testing once we get to it, is because you've got a, a completely isolated VRM heat sink, and that's kind of okay. It works sometimes, especially when you have a plate that's split in half, for example. Completely isolated VRM heat sink stuck between the hottest component on the board, the chokes or the inductors, and on top of the next hottest components, the MOSFETs, with no transfer whatsoever to the heat sink, this giant piece of aluminum and copper is not being leveraged here to cool the VRMs. It's not. There's no contact. So the only way you get any cooling is really from the air getting pushed down from these fans into the fin stack for the VRM, and that is somewhat blocked by this. Not a lot, but this happens to be exactly where the VRM heatsink is, and it's blocking any kind of air penetration through the larger fin stack. And further, for some reason, they just didn't do a thermal pad there. And that's something that maybe we can test in our review is to an AB, remove this thing, put a thermal pad on there and see if it improves. I bet you it probably would, but uh, we've tested that with the ACX cards in the past and saw that even a thermal pad Connecting fins like this with no base plate, just the small amount of surface area you get there, a thermal pad contacting those fins to another part of the heatsink was actually an improvement on the ACX card. So that doesn't mean it'll be an improvement here, but it's worth trying. And uh, this will be very interesting to see how it unfolds in testing, but there's no real functional reason to have this here as a vibration damping pad, assuming they designed their card correctly because it's so huge and it's a three fan cooler anyway. So it shouldn't really, vibration should not be a concern. You're not spinning fast enough and you're not putting enough torque at weird angles to cause vibration. Uh, but no thermal pad's a very odd choice. So we'll look into that. For the rest of the cooler though, we have a copper plate as expected for the GPU. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes that let's see where they're going. These look like sixes, maybe eights. Yes, I think we have a few of each in here. So we've got three coming through the cold play area and going into the, that would be the right half of the heat sink, which is going over the chokes and the VRM without any contact whatsoever to either of those things. Not that you need to contact the inductors because they, they're kind of self-contained heat sinks anyway. And then the other three heat pipes, one of them comes through, wraps around here and uses the left half of the heat sink and then the other two wrap under it and come through to this half of the heatsink. So fairly standard design in that regard. You can see the edges of them there. Uh, nothing too special with that design. So that's the bulk of the cooler. Then moving on to the rest of the card, let's get the, uh, let's get the back plate off. Um, so back plate is held on by the cables, which have been disconnected, and then by some screws that go through as we showed earlier. OK. 
Okay, is it loose? Yes. There's our video card. There's our backplate. So let's let's start with the backplate and then get to the PCB last. For the backplate, we have what appears to be a metal or metal-like material, but I think this might be metal, this part here. The part that confuses me about this is if you flip it and look here, we have very clearly a strong difference, a stark contrast between these two materials. So what's going on? Well, this looks like a metal and this does not. This is glossy. So it's either the thickest paint in the world or it's a different material. And I bet if we look at the edges, yeah. So if you can see this, I don't know how, the, let's try and get uh, the overhang. So if you look down here, there's a bit of an overhang between the backing material, which is clearly deeper in, in kind of the depth buffer, so to speak, the adhesive back there and the rest of the plate. Now, if we flip it back over, we can uh, show probably that, yes, you could in fact peel this material up if you wanted to, see that? I'm not gonna peel it off because it's not my card to do so with, but you can see that it's it's a an adhesive. I don't know why it's there. I am I am genuinely uncertain as to why that exists. Uh, you're never gonna see that side of the card. Maybe it's like to prevent, I don't know. It doesn't make contact with the back anyway because it's got these standoffs. So even if they were concerned about bridging contacts, it looks like kind of a non-issue. Um, especially if they used like a, a proper design anyway. But yeah, so we've got a weird plastic coating here. That's not gonna help with cooling, certainly. Uh, it might act as a bit of a hot box, we'll test it. This cable goes to an LED right here, so that is an RGB digital LED. Um, and we might have B-roll of that in the review, but that's a digital LED. Now let's get back to the PCB. See if there's anything on the backside first. Not really, some capacitors behind the GPU, all normal stuff. But we've got two screws for the VRM heatsink. God damn it. Two screws, okay. And two more screws for that one, but let's start here. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, by the way, talking about the indentations earlier on that rubber one, another clear sign that something's not a thermal pad is you can see all the indents for all the components on it. And we couldn't see that on the other one. Um, but that's the, uh, there's your v VRM heatsink. And let's look at this insane setup now. So this is the actual VRM. There's your core VRM, there's your mem VRM. So going by uh, what we know of these, these are, according to Buildzoid, it's impossible or at least very hard to find data sheets for the FETs that they're using. And uh, that means it's hard to do a full in-depth analysis. What we do know is that Zotac is using what looks to be a rebrand of the QN3100 series. So QN3107 and QN3103 and they're using a voltage controller, the UP9511, in eight phase mode going into eight doublers for 16 phases. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, hang on. Maybe he means 14 plus two. Ah, sneaky. What's under here? Found more. So having pulled this heatsink off, which was a bit of a hidden grouping of two more phases, if I understand this correctly, what I'm seeing with the, with the help of Buildzoid is the QN3103 is this line here, and then the QN3107, 3100 series, 
is this line here and also this one. And then we have more, we have two more sets of 3103s and 3107s here. Uh, and what it looks like it amounts to is a 16 phase VRM that's being doubled, just as he said, through the UP9511 controller in eight phase mode. We end up with this huge thing. And then you've got your MAM VRM over here. And that more or less wraps up what we know of the board today. Uh, I don't think there will be a further VRM analysis of this one or anything like that. Normally we do those, but speaking with Buildzoid, who does our VRM and PCB analysis of these boards normally, it sounds like it's hard to get the data sheets because uh, the FETs are rebrands, dis discrete FETs, so I'm not sure we'll be able to go further than that. But we can do testing, overclocking, thermals, and maybe gaming performance. But we'll focus on thermals and overclocking and see how this card does. Uh, and then hopefully do some cool AB or ABC tests where we remove things like the back plate, see if this is actually just a hot box, uh, and maybe test removing that rubber atrocity on the VRM heatsink or atop it anyway. So these two are supposed to sandwich together. And actually, we noticed separately that they don't even make full contact. So even as a vibration damping thing, it doesn't do a whole lot. We have a photo of that that shows it better than the video can. But when the card is together in a single piece, uh, it doesn't make contact with that plate anyway. It's not a thermal pad, but it's also not doing anything other than maybe obstructing airflow. And it could be a thermal pad. So we'll test that. We'll see how it is before committing too much further to uh, commentary on it. But thank you for watching. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt. Make sure you subscribe for more. Thank you to Josh for the loaner. And we'll see you all next time.